So, this episode of SmackDown was still a very good show, despite most of the top tier superstars not being on the show. And we also had a massive, massive return as well. Uh, so let's run over the entire show. The show began with, with Edge, like of course it would. Edge is now possessed. He is now obsessed and possessed on getting his hands on Roman Reigns. He's saying that he can beat Roman Reigns. No, you can't, Edge. No, you can't. No, you can't beat Roman Reigns. Nor should you beat Roman Reigns. And yes, as you guys can tell, I have a shaved face now. The last review you saw my face was nothing but a bearded mess and now I finally got a shave. So now you're seeing a more dashing version of me. But Edge was determined to prove that he can beat Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns was not on the show at all this week. I guess that was a bit of a fresher breath, breath of fresh air. I mean, I said it the wrong way that we didn't see Roman at all on the show. But you know what's funny? Most of the big stars were not on the show, and this show was still good. This show was still good, despite not all of the big names were there. Only a handful, like Edge and Bianca and Bailey, And obviously Apollo, you know, the Intercontinental Champion. So, so not a lot of big names were on the show. So yeah, Edge was determined. Who cares about Edge? Well, apparently, well, well, apparently most people do, because everybody likes to be stuck in the past with their old nostalgia. Nostalgia keeps people alive, apparently. Apparently, it's okay to bring back nostalgia, but yet people still want the future. Yet people want the future, and pe yet here's the thing, right? Before we move on, people want WWE to create new stars. WWE wants fans to create new stars and build to the future by help creating brand new stars. And yet, people like Edge come back and people are so giddy and excited to see him back. What happened to the whole prospect of you wanting the future to be built up? Create new stars, right? Let's create new stars, but yet let's still cheer for those old nostalgia 40-year-old 40 40 out-of-their-prime old men. Let's keep cheering for those out of out, out of touch and out of prime old superstars, but we want the future. We want that. We want WWE to help to create new stars, and this is why WWE can't create new stars. Bringing people like Edge back and having him just take a spot from someone who actually deserves it. That's why. That's why WWE can't create new stars, and you people just continue to eat it up. So, that's your fault. Big E and, and, and Shinsuke Nakamura, as how Rick Boogs likes to say his name, or Kingsuke Nakamura is his name now. They battled Apollo Crews and Baron Snorbin. Now, Baron... I missed saying that. I used to call him that a lot when he was Baron Corbin. And I actually missed calling him that. Baron Corbin came out to his King music and... Possibly the most funniest thing ever was Greg Hamilton. This was clearly on purpose. This was not by accident. Greg, Greg Hamilton came to the ring and he, and he accidentally called Baron Corbin King Corbin. He was like... King! Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Baron Corbin. I found that really, really funny. I thought that was really, really funny. And also notice Corbin's hair is starting to grow back. His hair is starting to grow back a little bit. I've kind of noticed that his, that his head is starting to grow a bit of hair. I don't know. It sounds like a lone wolf kind of thing if you ask me. Because that's what the lone wolf had. Hair. I could be wrong though. But anyway, Big E and uh, Kingsuke Nakamura won this match. 
uh, with when uh, Rick Boogs said that Baron Corbin's car was being hijacked or taken away, and this distracted him to the point where Big E would hit the big ending and pin him. Bianca Belair and, ba ba and Bailey went face to face, and Bianca Belair challenged Bailey to one of my personal favorite stipulations in WWE, an I Quit match. Holy shit, I am so excited. I love I Quit matches. If you guys have followed my, followed my channel, you know how much of a big fan I am of the I Quit stipulation. But for those who do, are not aware of that, I love the I Quit match. It was one of my favorite matches when I watched the WWE. I loved the John Cena JBL I Quit match from 2005. That was great. The John Cena Randy Orton one, despite Randy Orton losing, that was a, another great I Quit match. Most of the I Quit matches are were, are were with John Cena, but I Quit matches were just my personal favorite stipulation because I just loved the brutality in those matches. And the women have only had two I Quit matches in history. Now I now I original now I now I did forget one. Cuz on my Twitter I tweeted that th that this I Quit match between Bianca and Bailey was the second, but I made a mistake, but I made a mistake. I totally forgot about Tony Storm and Kaylee Ray. They had an I Quit match in NXT UK. I didn't see that match. I, di I didn't see that match. I really need to go watch that because I would have loved I would have loved the brutality in that match. But um, and also the uh, the other female I Quit match was Beth Phoenix and Melina. That was the other time that the women had an I Quit match. So I love I Quit matches, and I'm really looking forward to what kind of brutality Bianca and Bailey uh, provide here. And I'm very very excited to see what. I'm very, very excited. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn had a last man standing qualifying Money in the Bank match. And holy cow, what a match this was. I personally really did enjoy this match. I personally enjoyed it. I thought it was great. And man, when it comes to Kevin and Sami, my god, their matches are just so darn good. How can you not enjoy every single time Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn wrestle each other? It doesn't matter if Sami Zayn's the babyface or Kevin Owens is the heel, or if Kevin Owens is the babyface and Sami Zayn is the heel. It doesn't matter what way they are, these two will always deliver a classic match every single time. And Kevin Owens, people like to... And I've heard some people rag on Kevin Owens, some people don't like him, and I understand, I can get that. But, a lot of people need to start giving Kevin Owens credit. This guy has so much freaking balls to take the nasty bumps that this guy takes in his matches. The matches, most of the matches that I've seen this guy in from, from, from last year to this year, it's always one nasty bump after one freaking nasty bump. This guy puts his body on the line. This guy goes out there and does the craziest shit I have ever seen. I'm gaining a lot more respect for Kevin Owens every single time I see this guy put his body on the line. This guy is fantastic. I wasn't really the biggest fan of him, but my god, he's putting his body on the line, and I can appreciate Kevin Owens doing that more, and I wish people would put some respect into him because of that. How can you not appreciate a guy who comes out every single week and puts his body on the line. These are the kind of wrestlers I respect more. Wrestlers who are willing to put their bodies on the line for our entertainment. That is what's important. Those are the kind of wrestlers I respect. Not people that are, are afraid to put their body on the line. I respect wrestlers who are willing to put their body on the line for our entertainment. And Kevin Owens, i got to give this guy mad props. The bumps that he took in this match was absolutely fantastic. They were brutal, and he and he made it look believable. And so did Sami Zayn. He took some crazy bumps too. And Kevin Owens brought back the old faithful apron bomb. That was a really nice callback to the old apron bomb. It was cool to see that. And Kevin Owens won this match. He qualified for the Money in the Bank. He 
got the victory. And poor old Sami Zayn will now be talking, will now, uh, talking about his conspiracy. And, uh, well, he to well, Sami Zayn likes to talk about karma now. Well, I guess karma got to Sami Zayn on this occasion. Sonya Deville came out to announce the next female to be a part of the Money in the Bank ladder match for the women's division. My first thought is that it has to be Liv Morgan now, or either it's going to be Mia Yim. But to my surprise, even though I did hear about her potentially coming back, Zelina Vega comes back. Zelina Vega comes back to WWE after being released in November. Crazy. Zelina Vega is back in WWE. And this was... A few weeks before Alistair, and this was like a few weeks after Alistair Black got released. And this kind of, you know, kind of made me laugh in a way. Not laugh in a way that I found it funny that Zelina Vega is back and Alistair Black's fired. I more find it funny because it was basically a couple of weeks. Because Zelina Vega's, I, I guess her, I guess her time, I guess her, I guess her, con, I guess her uh, no complete, compete clause ran out by this point. So many people over the last few days and weeks, ever since Andrade joined AEW, and I don't normally talk about AEW, but I'm bringing it up here because I find it funny. When, a when Andrade joined AEW, apparently Vicky Guerrero is his manager, and ever since Vicky Guerrero became his manager, everybody wanted Thea Trinidad, Zelina Vega, come to AEW and be the manager for Andrade. And seeing Zelina Vega come back to WWE it just makes me laugh. It makes me laugh that all those poor AEW fans who all, all wanted Zelina in, in AEW will either now have their hearts crushed or they would all be th ripping up their Zelina Vega or Thea Trinidad support cards and ripping them up and throwing them out the window and have completely lost respect, completely lost respect for Zelina Vega. And I'm very sure. And I'm very damn confident. That I know there would be people out there. That would have completely turned their back. On this woman. Or just stopped. Or lost their respect for her. Ever since she came back to WWE. I'm pretty sure there's already a handful of people. That have probably already done that. So. Yeah I just think it's funny. I just think it's funny. So many people were excited to see her in AEW. And now all of a sudden. Here she is back in WWE. And yes, I know the whole Twitch scandal and the whole Twitch thing, you know, plays a factor. So a lot of people are now thinking, okay, well, she got released over the whole Twitch ban and she stood for unionization and all that. I guess that's all water under bridge. I guess that's all water under the bridge now. That's my personal take. That it's just all water under bridge and maybe Zelina Vega has... As far as I've been told, Alistair Black now streams. So it tells me Zelina Vega must have given up her Twitch account in order to come back to WWE. Because Alistair Black is now the one that does streams, not her. So I'm assuming that's the case. That she gave up her rights to her Twitch account in order to come back to WWE. So that's probably my guess. But I ain't complaining. She's back. She should not have been released in the first place. In my personal opinion, Zelina Vega should have never been released in the first place. So WWE have rewrite another wrong. First they released Samoa Joe for literally no reason. And then they brought him back. And then they fired Zelina Vega. And now they've brought her back. So I can appreciate WWE rewriting the wrongs and, and bringing back the people they released. I can only hope and pray that the next pair of people they plan on bringing back are Billy Kay and Peyton Royce. Because I would love to see them back in WWE. But I highly doubt that very much. So Zelina Vega is now back. She's now a part of the 2021 Money in the Bank. And and my god, Zelina Vega is just... She's awesome on the promo. She's awesome when it comes to promos. If you're going to tell... If you're going to... If there's anyone... And I know, and I know, a lot of people seem to put Selena Vega in the same category as AJ Lee. Like they, like I've seen some people compare her to AJ Lee when it comes to promos. 
yeah, their promos are really good. Yeah, their promos of each other are really damn good. But man, Zelina Vega, my god, man, she's an awesome promo. She's a great wrestler, and her character is just so good. She literally, she fits WWE like a glove. If there's anybody else, I would, if there's any other person I'd like to see come back to WWE, it'd be Ruby Riot. but I also doubt they'd bring her back as well, because they literally just released her. So, so Liv Morgan came out, had another whinge about uh, not being in the money in the bank, so they're building a whole storyline around her, trying to prove herself worthy to be a part of the money in the bank. I don't mind this. I don't mind this at all. I don't. I, I think this kind of storyline has potential because you can kind of see that maybe Sonya Deville doesn't believe in Liv Morgan, and maybe eventually, like, she just names everybody that's going to be in it, and the last person she names in the Money in the Bank is herself. And then maybe Zillin and maybe uh, Liv Morgan comes out and challenges Sonya Deville for the rights for the final spot, and they have a match. I don't know, but I do think Liv Morgan's going to be a part of the match. But I do like the whole storyline they uh, they're running with here on trying what they're trying to run here. I really do like the storyline a lot. I think I think it's a good way to build Liv Morgan up. And that's what they need to do. Build up a new star. And that's exactly what they're doing here. And I and I cannot wait until the fans start turning on her when she when she eventually comes close to becoming a champion. Or she is the champion and then people eventually turn on her. Because we all know that's how the fans ba the fan base works. So Luke Morgan, she she won her uh, she won her matchup against Zelina Vega. Yes. Welcome back, w Selena Vega. You come back and you already lose. Well, it was kind of expected anyway, so I don't think people should really be should be ranting and raving that Selena Vega should have won her first match back. I think it was clearly obvious she was not winning. Remember, wins and losses don't matter in WWE, so Selena will be fine. This loss doesn't clearly matter at all. And another thing that they just... And another thing about Selena that I think was kind of weird... Is that when she got named, they 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 tried to act surprised, and they tried to act surprised, and they weren't really, and they obviously didn't really d d talk about why she wasn't why why she's been off, been gone. They just, I guess it under, I guess it's understandable. I mean, like you wouldn't really talk about, oh, this person got fired and now we brought them back or kind of thing. But, I don't know. I just thought it was a bit weird on how they presented her comeback. But, it was nice to see Zelina Vega back. Angelo Dawkins battled the bid, the bid list, the bid list, the bid list hair shaven Otis. The bid list hair shaven working man Otis. Man, I liked Otis when he was a good guy. I didn't mind the happy-go-lucky Otis. But ever since he's turned heel, my god, I have really grown to like Otis even more. I really like Otis as a... I really like Otis like this as, a, as, a, as an aggressive monster. I really do like this a lot. This new version of Otis, I really like a lot. He and Chad Gable are just... They're just a great pair. This is the best thing that has ever happened to Otis. And him turning heel has really benefited more. And my god, he's come a long way, Otis. If he and Chad Gable are not the next SmackDown Tag Team Champions, then all the build-up that you've been doing for Otis is literally nothing. Otis and Chad need to be the, need to be the team that dethrones Rey and Dominic Mysterio. And by the way... Ray and Dominic Mysterio should be stripped of those titles considering they're injured. But no, of course not. The show ended with Edge beating the hell out of Jimmy Uso. Yeah, don't really care. You guys know me when it comes to Edge. I literally do not give a toss. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching this, uh, listening to this uh, SmackDown review. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hit that thumbs up. And give me your thoughts and opinions down below. And I will see you all next time.